We will literally become one of the most inclusive communities in the city of Charlotte. You know, major cities do this all the time. But for Charlotte, this is kind of unique. We're, we're a relatively, if I tell the truth, we're a relatively segregated city. We consider ourselves a world-class city, but now we're calling on this community to be inclusive, to live together the way people in world-class cities live. As Dr. Walker will share, Little Rock envisioned this community many years ago. And in 2018, they selected Laurel Street to work with them in this pursuit. And while we have been blessed with great partners, it has not been an easy endeavor. Our develop, as developer, our primary job is to successfully secure the financing for the development, to design and plan the new community, to manage the process to achieve our collective goals. We have diligently remained committed to those goals, but we had to do it through a global pandemic. And through market pressures, including rising construction costs, interest rates rising, supply chain issues, we have been challenged time and time again throughout this process. But thanks to the hard work of this team, we have success successfully secured the financing for this $24 million development. The Little Rock CDC contributed land for this community. The city of Charlotte contributed land and provided a housing trust fund loan of $1.5 million. The Charlotte Housing Opportunity Investment Fund, administered by LIS, provided a permanent loan of $4.2 million. LIS also provided a $17 million construction loan through their Black Economic Development Fund, which I believe is one of the largest in the country. And finally, Barings also provided a permanent loan of $17.4 million. So Barricon 7 consists of 105 units in this five-story elevator served building. Of the 105 units, 67 are one bedrooms, 24 are two bedrooms, 14 are three bedrooms. The project includes 53 units with rents that are affordable to households at 30, 60, and 80% of the median income. So those are our affordable units. But we will serve all income levels. 52 of the units will be market rate units. So when I describe inclusive housing, it is an inclusive community. Uptown Charlotte is the largest employment center in the Charlotte region. Barrack on 7th will offer residents convenient access to employment and numerous retail options. Within walking distance, residents can enjoy recreational options and a variety of transportation options. We are also environmentally sustainable. It is, this building is certified as a North Carolina brownfield site. It is built to national green building standards. And we have limited parking with the intent of taking advantage of this walkable, accessible location. <coughs> as we move forward, LSA management will lease and operate Barrick according to the highest standards in the industry. Laurel Street looks forward to working with Little Rock CDC as long-term owners and partners of this property for years to come. So after six years of extremely hard work, I am very proud to welcome you to Derek and Seth. Let's give God praise for Deion Nelson again. To Bishop Starnes, Bishop Moore, Bishop Walker, Bishop Supervisor, to maybe President of the Moore, General and Connectional Officers of Andrew Zion Church, fellow clergy, certainly to our Mayor Pro Tem, to members of City Council, members of County Commissioner, and other elected officials who may be present, to my family members who are here, my wife Donna, who it's filming me right now. <laughs> to my baby girl, Deborah, who is here. Oh, yeah. And they and be. And King. And, and, all my friends. <laughs> and to my dad, who is here. I recognize him already, but my father is here. I'm so happy to have him here from Chicago. Certainly to all of the partners and members of. Little Rock Community Zion Church and the members of the Board of Directors of Little Rock Community Develop Development Corporation. I want to ask all the members of the Little Rock Community Development Corporation who are here just to wave your hand and say amen. Mm -hmm. 
And members of Little Rock Family Zion Church, wave your hand. Amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what I'm going to say. This is the day Amen. that the Lord has made. Amen. I don't know about you, but I will. Yes, I will. I will rejoice. I will be glad. And anybody else say rejoice? God is worthy to be praised. As a matter of fact, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall lift his voice unto the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Test it one, two, three. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. Together. My brothers and my sisters, this day has finally come. A day when a dream has actually come true. A day when vision has actually become reality. I want you to know that I know that we are right now standing on holy ground. So we are surrounded not only by those who are physically here, but there are a cloud of witnesses who join us as well. Our ancestors who paved the way for this moment and the events, accomplishments, and progress that will follow as a result of their sweat, their tears, and yes, their prayers. In fact, Barrack on Seventh is named after James Barrett, the first bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. He and others were bold enough, proud enough, to birth the Freedom Church that served as the church of Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, Frederick Douglass, and many others whose lives have made an indelible mark on this nation and on this world. Without question, we stand on their shoulders today, and we honor their memory, and we celebrate their great legacy. As a matter of fact, my heart left today when I parked and saw Ms. Jacinta White, who is the daughter of Dr. William Milton White, one of my mentors who was the pastor of Little Rock, who led them from the old church to build the new facility. And she is here, who mark now, as we expand this campus for Little Rock Church. Thank you for coming to Central. And please give your regards, our regards to your mother and your family. I'm blessed to, to pastor a wonderful, progressive, and cooperative congregation. Little Rock Amy Zion, who, has, who was open to the notion of establishing a separate entity of our ministry the Little Rock Community Development Corporation of 2006 that would allow us to better serve our brothers and sisters in an effort to give them not a hand out, but a hand up. Veracon 7 is an inclusive community that helps to address the need for affordable housing as well as provide a space where persons of every social demographic can dwell together as neighbors, and fellow citizens who strive to make a dollar out of 15 cents, yes. and also who strive to make a difference in and with their lives. I want to thank the members of our board of directors who supported the idea to approach the city of Charlotte to request land to build housing. I want to thank our mayor, Mayor Vi Lyles, and our city council, as well as city staff to approve and help to facilitate this project. I want to thank Laurel Street, led by the phenomenal Dion Nelson, for their ingenuity and for their help and assistance in developing and making this thing possible. Can we pause to celebrate them again? <laughs> Verifon 7 is the manifestation of the reality that when we come together as the church, government, developers, 
financial institutions, great things can and will happen. When we came before the city council some years ago, I reminded them of the commercial I saw as a child of two men who accidentally collided as they walked in a park. One of the gentlemen was eating peanut butter. The other was eating chocolate. And one said, you put your chocolate in my peanut butter. The other said, you put your peanut butter in my chocolate. But when they tasted it, they discovered it was good. And Reese Cup was born. I want to say to all of my partners, the city of Charlotte, Lisk, Barrings, and last but not least, Dion Nelson and Laura Street, thank you for putting your peanut butter with our chocolate. <laughs> to the members of Little Rock, especially those who joined me as we were stop at this site on our many strolls to the polls, as we stopped at this site on our prayer walks, we would actually stop here when there was nothing but a lot and two shotgun houses. Amen. And we would join hands and we would pray about this moment. We stopped here. We would ask God for this land. We stopped here to imagine the possibility that out of these grounds, a facility and a community called Barrack on Seven would and could emerge. So the Bible is true. James 4 and 2 says, you have not because you ask not. So we asked and we believe that God would expand our territory and God has done that. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, I, want, I pray that Barrack on 7 will not be a one hit wonder. I pray that Barrack on 7 will become a model not only for the city of Charlotte, the state of North Carolina, but a model for the nation of how persons from every sector of society can bring the best of who they are and what they have and bring it together to bring about positive change. Last but not least, let me emphatically say, we serve a big God. And he's worthy. Oh, I pray. Yes. I don't know what you've come to do. I said, I don't know what you've come to do. But I come to praise his name. Everybody got to shout and hallelujah. Everybody got to shout and praise the Lord. Be worthy of the rising of the sun. I'm going to go in doubt of the same. Our God is worthy to be praised. And I'm here to do just that. God bless you. Anderson. I serve you on Charlotte City Council as Mayor Pro Tem. And, and I also serve you as the district rep for District 1. And we're in District 1 right now. Amen. This is a really exciting day. And to hear Dion talk about the origins of this thought and this concept. And six years later, we are here at a grand opening of affordable, inclusive housing that will welcome all members and residents of Charlotte along the AMI spectrum, from 30% AMI to market rate. That is amazing. I just want to pause and give a uh, round of applause for that. We know that historically for Charlotte, it's very difficult to break out of the economic strata that you were born into. And one of the ways that helps individuals do that is to have social equity and to interact with others that have 
different economic strata and different experiences. And so these grounds will very much be a testament to how individuals can change their lives and break out of poverty into a life where they can grow, live, and thrive. So it really is amazing that this is coming together six years later. When we are doing the unveiling today, we see that it's a beautiful building of brick and mortar. But we're not just unveiling brick and mortar in affordable housing. We are unveiling hope and aspiration for families that want a different outcome for their children, a different outcome for themselves. And so we really need to embrace that and understand the concept that we're standing on here today. As we think about this project, I just want to let you know it is a testament to the determination of several individuals circling the wagon and sitting at the table to say, let's work together. So we clearly have our faith-based community. We have elected officials, we have, we have developers like Laurel Street, we have nonprofits coming together, we have partners like LISC. It really and truly does take a village. And as Dion was walking through that financial stack, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And so having everyone come together and give their peace in the face of a pandemic. You know, Wall Street does many projects with the city of Charlotte, and through the pandemic, as we were coming out of it, they had to come back and say, the market forces have changed. We need some we need help with some of these projects. And we found a way at the city of Charlotte, city council and the mayor did, to ensure that we can bring projects like this to fruition. So I want to say on behalf of the entire Charlotte City Council and the mayor, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Wall Street. Thank you, Reverend, for what you've done. This is truly a testament of how we can change lives in the Queen City by working together and not giving up and believing in hope, believing in humanity, believing in inclusivity for all Charlotteans. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My name is David Mahalik. I'm here on behalf of Bearings. Um, when I saw the program and thought I was following, I thought, uh oh, I'm in trouble because I am the least qualified public speaker up here. But I'm very honored to be here today. Uh, Bearings, for those that don't know, is a global asset management firm with about 400 billion of assets under management. Our headquarters is here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's very humbling. It's quite an honor to be here uh, today to, to represent Bearings at this great event. Bearings has been an active lender and investor in affordable housing for over 25 years. We've been a dedicated and reliable source of capital to developers to help them finance projects and build communities coast to coast. And it's clear to me that when I come back here over the years, this is truly going to be a community. It's very exciting. In the last three years, we've expanded our debt investment to also include workforce and fixed income multifamily housing projects, given the growing demand for the missing middle of housing, which again, it's obvious that that's what this community represents. In 2019, Darren was one of the pioneer institutions to commit to the, a public-private partnership to help combat the growing housing crisis in Charlotte. Along with working with Mayor Lyles and her team, our commitment to this partnership enabled us to partner with List Charlotte and launch the Charlotte Housing Opportunity Investment Fund. As one of the investors in that fund, we committed two and a half million dollars of below market debt capital to help fill the gap that many projects face in trying to structure their deals. We value the partnership with List Charlotte and the City of Charlotte very much. Barricon 7th is another illustration of our commitment to help finance an important and much needed housing development in uptown Charlotte. We provided a $17.4 million permanent loan commitment with a term of 17 years, as was mentioned earlier. And we're incredibly proud of Dion Lee and the entire Laurel Street team, along with the Little Rock Community Development Corporation for making this project reality. 
your vision and dedication to helping the people of Charlotte live in healthy and sustainable housing is commendable. We look forward to growing our partnership with you, and once again, congratulations. It's truly an honor to be here and represent Bearings. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Tiffany Durr, and I am the Senior Director of our National Investment Team at the Local Initiative Support Corporation, LISC. LISC is a national CDFI that provides debt grants and supports programmatic endeavors through our 38 local offices around the country, including our office here in Charlotte. It is my pleasure to join you all today for this exciting grand opening and dedication ceremony. My LISC colleagues and I are thrilled to participate in Barrick 17, which sets the blueprint for inclusive and sustainable housing in Charlotte and beyond. I'd like to acknowledge a few of them who are joining me today. Rusty Mills, Jordan Broswell, Carol Doyle, and I'm standing uh, in for Ralphine uh, Caldwell, our Executive Director. We are incredibly proud of the partnership with Dion Nelson, Cochran, and the entire Laurel Street team. They have been a steadfast partner with LIS to provide innovative solutions to the housing crisis. I continue to be so impressed by how this team works collaboratively and thoughtfully to push the narrative forward on how to deliver better housing solutions to Charlotte, and I keep saying, and beyond. We are grateful to our partners in this project, including Little Rock CDC, the City of Charlotte, and Barrens. Your contributions were critical pieces of the financing of this project. Projects like this cannot happen unless a multitude of partners and funding sources come together with the right people at the right time. Thank you. Since Liz Charlotte opened its doors in 2019, our local investments have exceeded $60 million in our community. We bring together public and private capital for neighborhood revitalization efforts, technical assistance programs, grant making, and as with this project, the creation of inclusive housing stock through the $53 million Charlotte Housing Opportunity Investment Fund, we call it CHOIP. CHOIP was launched in 2019 through dedicated investors who understood we must make bold moves if we are going to move the needle in the housing shortage. Since then, we've leveraged over $30 million with the City Housing Trust Funds and preserved over 1,900 housing units. CHOIP is more than housing. For example, we provided three of our communities are financed with uh, our zone for Myers Park High School, one of the highest ranking schools in the county. Two of the projects are specifically reserved for seniors housing, and two thirds of our fund supports housing in neighborhoods where greater than 50% of the population is black. And through our partnership with Barings, we provided over 1,600 laptops to choice funded communities. For this project, as Dion mentioned, we invested $4.2 million in subordinate financing. This secured long-term, fixed-rate, and flexible financing. But that's not all. This also partnered with Laurel Street through our flagship racial equity fund called the Black Economic Development Fund. BEDF was launched in 2020 with a capital raise of $250 million to take bold steps towards addressing the economic disparities within the Black community. This fund provides short-term loans to black developers, business owners, and banking institutions across the country. Through the EDF, we invested an additional $17 million in financing for the construction portion of its project. And as you mentioned, this is by far the largest investment in the entire country. So This investment is not only a commitment to the promise of inclusive and sustainable housing, but also to the future of Laurel Street, Little Rock CDC, and the Charlotte community. On behalf of LISC, the Executive Director, Ralphine Caldwell, and the incredible team here in Charlotte, we appreciate the support of the community to continue to uplift and support our efforts. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Randy Brings by 
vice chair of the Little Rock Enemy Zion trustee board. To all the past and present bishops, Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker, pastor, Mayor Pro Team, Ms. Dante Anderson, state, city, and county officials, members, and guests, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The Little Rock Community Development Project was a vision of our esteemed pastor, Dr. Dwayne Anthony Walker, and designed by Law Street to help solve some of our problems with low and moderate income individuals and families. We would like to thank you for your attendance today to celebrate this momentous occasion. We are truly blessed by your presence and support throughout this project. The result of our collective effort is evident in the grand opening of our concept. May God continue to bless you and have a great day. I hope you can pardon me. Many of you have hair, but I have a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I first want to thank God for each and every one of you who have come to share in this celebration. And I must recognize Bishop and Mrs. Darren Moore. Amen. Bishop George Walker, who will give the prayer. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, who will give the prayer of dedication. I must also thank God for the general officers of the Amazon Church who are here. Raise your hand. I think I saw Dr. McCann and Dr. Merriweather. And the president of Hood Theological Seminary, Dr. Virgil Latimer. We're grateful for presiding elder Ryder Henderson and all the presiding elders that are here from the Piedmont Episcopal District. Wave your hands, presiding elders. We're grateful for many pastors and ministers who are here who are part of the Piedmont Episcopal District, wave your hands. And many laity in the Piedmont Episcopal District, wave your hands. We greet all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a dangerous thing to give a bishop, a pulpit, and beat. <laughs> but I'm going to resist <laughs> the temptation to preach and just say thank you and congratulations. The scripture says that without a vision, the people perish. We've come to thank God and celebrate the vision of this pastor, of the people of the Little Rock Church, of this city of Charlotte, North Carolina, and of this community and its organizations. Can we thank God for Jesus? Than when church, state, and community yes. come together yes. to meet the needs yes. of people. Yes. Yes. And because I'm cold, I'm going to say congratulations.
Let me first of all, before I begin this prayer, just say to you what is very obvious. I'm a proud man. <laughs> stand here on behalf of his mother to say that this is a signal moment for not only the Little Rock Church, but for the Amy Zion Church and for Christendom yes. Yes. to see what happens when People and church come together. People in the community, represented by so many organizations and corporations, come together to create what we are standing before here this morning. God be praised. And I do want to say congratulations to the wonderful members of Little Rock who thought it not robbery to follow leadership and to see what it has accomplished here today. Thank you. Let us pray. O thou in whose presence my soul takes the light, on whom in afflictions I call, my comforts by day, my hope, song in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Almighty God, our Father, we pause this morning with hearts filled with thanksgiving and praise for what you have allowed, pastor and people, community and friends, to accomplish. We thank you for this marvelous demonstration of so many entities, partners, who are like minds that come together to create this community. A community that will provide affordable housing for many who otherwise would not have a roof over their head. Many who would not be able to afford to live in a luxurious community like this will now be able to call this home. And for that, we are grateful. We pray your blessings upon these hallowed grounds, that you would surround this property and this community and will protect it from all hurt, harm, or danger. For these are perilous times in which we are now experiencing with your presence, with your guardians, you will make this, co this community safe. For this will be an example for not only the city of Charlotte, but for other communities around the world that will be inspired by what they see here and will go forward and do likewise. Bless every family who shall enter these grounds to call home. 
bless their extended families. And may they know that this has been possible because of faith, hope, and love. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to surround us, God, with all that you have provided for us. And inspire us to continue to keep our hands in your hands and to be the faithful people to which you have called to be witnesses in times like these. Now save us from weak resignation to the evil we deplore and let the joys of thy salvation be our glories evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, for the living of these days. We will be always careful to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise that you deserve. For it is in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I always like being last on the program because everyone's excited to see me. <laughs> so I will keep it short because uh, my name is Lee Cochran, I'm Senior Vice President for Development for Laura Street. It's been my pleasure over these past years to work with. Dr. Walker, the, the CDC board, uh, to, to bring the Brown Bears on Southern. I'm very happy for it to be done. Um, I'm really just here to direct traffic for now uh, to tell you what's going to happen next. Uh, but I did want to, a um, uh, couple of thank yous, but I just wanted to make sure that haven't been made. For those who don't know, this building was designed by Klein Design. This beautiful building our architect is Klein Design. Our civil engineering was uh, Timmons Engineering. But I just wanted to say thank you um, for, obviously, it, it, took, it took all of us to get this done, but not least of which the beautiful thing is what you all are going to see next uh, is get to see the insides of the building. So um, just thank you to them. Um, what we're going to do now, so this is the end of this part of the program, but I don't want anyone to move quite yet, so I just want to let you know what comes next. Um, what we're going to have before uh, next is uh, every, everyone that's up that spoke, uh, this group of speakers are going to move over to the door. Colleen's waving. We're going to do a ribbon cutting. So you're welcome as they move. Once they move, you guys, you're, everyone's welcome to kind of move around to watch the ribbon cutting. But we'll do a ribbon cutting over there at that door. And then what we'll have is the opportunity for folks to then see the inside of the building. So I want to give you a little bit of what you're going to get an opportunity to see. So you'll be able to go through the door on the right. That door will prop open so you can kind of go in and out. I would say don't rush, if you, if you, there's a lot of us here, so if you want to stand out here and you know it's cold, <laughs> um, and, and, and talk for a minute, let some others in, but over time, if you could, you're welcome to go in, you'll see the, the main amenity area for the building is, is behind you on, in the first floor, you'll see a lounge, the game room, which is actually where there's some light refreshments, there's a fitness room, conference area. We, we designed this for folks that if you want to work from home, you have areas where you can come, you can make phone calls where you're not stuck in your room. So it's a very nice amenity area on the first floor. And then also the management offices, the mail room, you can kind of wander and see the building. But then as you wander, you can also, there's a hallway, which will have that door propped open. If you wander down the hallway on the first floor, you can go into a unit. We've got a model unit set up uh, that you can see kind of how someone might decorate their unit. Um, it's a two-bedroom unit, I believe, if I'm remembering right. Um, but you'll get to see what the unit looks like. All the units have the same countertop refrigerator. You see one unit, you've really seen kind of all of them. They're just different sizes. So, um, but you'll get a chance to see a unit. So just kind of make your way. Um, you're welcome to come in and out of this, uh, on this, on this beautiful patio. We do have furniture for the patio. patio. It's actually stacked in one very large closet uh, in a storage room that, where we actually have bike storage. But we knew we needed this space, so there will be furniture eventually for the So, 
Um, with that, what I'm going to ask you, one, is say thank you again to everyone uh, for making this a reality. And what I'm going to ask you to do is no one move right now, except for the speakers. If all the speakers could come over, you can leave your stuff on the chair if you want, or take it with you, and head over there. So we'll do a ribbon cutting. Anybody that needs a picture can kind of reposition themselves. I'll stay here directly. So either come through the grass, either way.